Okay, so what we're going to be solving today is absolute value equations. So the first thing we need to know is what is the definition of an absolute value. So the absolute value is the distance from zero to any number on the number line. So let's write that down. So it's the distance from zero to a number on the number line. So that's the reason why when you find absolute value, it's always positive because distance can't be negative. So when you're asked what's the absolute value of 4, the absolute value is talking about what's the distance from 0 to 4 on the number line, and that is 4 units. So if you take a look at the absolute value of negative 4, we're talking about what's the distance from 0 to negative 4 on the number line, and that is 4 units. So that is why it's positive 4. So now if you take a look at this, the, uh, the absolute value of x equals 3, what could x be? So if x is equal to 3, when I plug in 3 here, the absolute value of 3 is 3. But x could also be negative 3, because if I do the absolute value of negative 3, I'll also get 3. So I have two answers. x can be either 3, three or it could be negative 3. So that's what we're going to work on today. So let's take a look at the bottom. All right, so to solve an absolute value equation, the first thing you're going to do is to isolate the absolute value. What that means is to get the absolute value by itself. So get absolute value okay so let's take a look at number one okay so we have the absolute value of x minus 4 and that's inside the absolute value symbol is equal to 3. So first I check to see if the absolute value is isolated, and it is, which means there's on the left side of the equation, on the left side of the equal sign, there is nothing else with the absolute value. So the next thing we're going to do is write two equations. One of the equations is what you have right now, always after the absolute value is isolated. And then the other equation is for the inverse. You only change one side of the equal sign. So I usually branch mine off like this, and I'm going to write x minus 4 equals 3. That's the first one. Write the equation of the what you have right now. And the other one will be for the inverse. So x minus 4, you change one side to its opposite. In this case, I'm going to change 3 to negative 3. All right, next step, step 3, is you're going to solve both equations. All right, so on the left side, I'm going to add 4 x is equal to 7. On the right side, add 4. x is equal to negative 3 plus 4 is positive 1. So now I do have to check. I have to check my answers in the original equation. Okay, what is given to you? And we're checking for extraneous roots. Remember, extraneous roots are extra roots, roots that don't work, that will have to cross off. So let me just move this down. All right, so I'm checking for the absolute value of x minus 4 is equal to 3. I'm going to plug in 7. The absolute value of 7 minus 4, does that equal 3? It's a question mark. The absolute value of 7 minus 4, that's absolute value of 3. Does that equal 3? Yes, the absolute value of 3 is equal to 3. So that means 7 is a good answer. Now we're going to check 1. So we're checking the absolute value of x minus 4. Does that equal 3 when I plug in 1? So it's the absolute value of 1 minus 4 equals 3. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So that checks. So I have two answers. My solution set is 1 and 7. All right, let's take a look at 2. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to see if our absolute value is isolated. So look at the left side of the equal sign. Notice that I have the absolute value and then I have this plus 3. You can't, you want to get this absolute value all by itself. So you want to get rid of the plus 3. So to get rid of a plus 3, we're going to minus 3. So I have the absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to 2x minus 6. Now from here, we're going to branch it off. I'm going to make my two equations, one the way it is right now, x minus 2 equals 2x minus 6, 
and then one for the inverse, x minus 2, and I'm going to change that to its inverse, negative 2x plus 6. And now you're going to solve each one. So for this one here, I'm going to add 2. I get x is equal to 2x minus 4 minus 2x. I have x minus 2x is negative x equals negative 4. So positive x is equal to positive 4. And then we're going to solve the right side. So this time I'll add 2x. I get 3x minus 2 is equal to 6. Add 2. 3x is equal to negative 6. Ooh, sorry, not negative 6. Positive 8. Because that's a plus 2. And then I'll divide both sides by 3. And I get a fraction. So I have 8 thirds. Alright, so now we have to check it. Alright, so remember you're plugging into the original. The absolute value of x minus 2 plus 3 equals 2x minus 3. And I'm going to plug in 4 on this side and on the right side I'll plug in uh, 8 thirds. So you might want to have your calculator uh, to check this if you don't want to do the fractions. Okay, so I'm going to, going to start with 4. The absolute value of 4 minus 2 plus 3, does that equal 2 times 4 minus 3? So 2, I'm going to do the right side. 2 minus 4 is, 2 times 4 is 8, minus 3 is 5. The absolute value of 4 minus 2, that's the absolute value of 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2 plus 3. Does that equal 5? Yes, 5 equals 5, so that checks. That means 4 is a good answer. Now I have to try 8 thirds. So it's the absolute value of 8 thirds minus 2 plus 3. Does that equal 2 times 8 thirds minus 3? All right, so I have 8 thirds minus 2 is, so that's 2 thirds plus 3 equals 16 thirds minus 3. So the absolute value of 2 thirds is 2 thirds plus 3 equals, so 16 thirds minus 3 is 7 thirds. And then 2 thirds plus 3, that's 11 thirds. So 11 thirds does not equal 7 thirds. So you, that's an extraneous root, so you want to make sure that you cross it out. So my only solution then is 4. All right, so that's it, and uh, we'll practice more, some more tomorrow in class. Have a good night.